Welcome to Eco Ask Why. Today we have a hero episode, and I'm very excited to have with us Chung Chi Tai, who is the Vice President of Engineering at Blueprint Automation. So welcome, Chung Chi. Good morning. Good morning, sir. How are you today? I'm good. Hey, hey you said this one is uh, I can do anything I want. So right. I have a Wawa cup here. Wawa, listen, I need a lifetime supply every day. Okay. So we, we hopefully we have a Wawa listener and we can get you hooked up with that free coffee. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're a ton of fun, Chun Chi, and we love the, these stories. And to, to get us started, we always ask uh, our heroes to share with us a little bit about their journey. Hmm. My journey is interesting. Uh, I was just thinking about that uh, this morning. Uh, I was thinking about when I started before I became an engineer. Uh, so I grew up in Asia. I don't know if that's probably obvious, but I grew up in Asia. Um, one thing about um, in Asia, I, I, I kind of explained this to my, to my friends. So my brother has a car. He needs an oil change. And basically he called a guy and the guy bring a truck over, picked up his car, put it on a truck, took it there for oil change and bring it back and put a car back inside the house. We never lifted a finger on most things. Um, and that's how I grew up. So when I became a mechanical engineer, um, it was quite a shock. I mean, I, I know the book, I, I know how to do calculations, things like that, um, but never really, really hands-on. So uh, fortunately I got a, uh, my first job is in the manufacturing environment. I learned how machines are designed and I learned wiring, I learned programming, all that. So from beginning to the end, it, in the beginning, it was quite a shock just because I really did not have to do much before. And I guess I embraced it. Um, that's how I learned all the different things. Um, so I went from a, um, being a designer, a machine designer for a manufacturer. So it was all in-house use machine equipment to um, doing packaging machines um, as an OEM, uh, original equipment manufacturers, to supply to all these different customers and to what I do now. Very cool. So now, where did you go to school at? I went to Iowa State. Iowa State, okay. Yes. I landed in Iowa from a tropical country in the beginning of January when it snowed a lot. So that was, that was a bit of a culture shock uh, on two couple fronts, right? Oh yes, the cold shock was incredible. I remember my uh, uh, my second month, and I, you know, I kind of mentioned earlier, I I really don't get up early in the morning. I'm not a morning person. I hate the morning. So, and when I was in college, that all four years, um, I don't do much in the library except to take a nap. Right. I, I have this perfect spot where I can take a nap. You know, it's by the window, the sun comes in, it's keeping me warm. So, and then I overslept. And I realized, okay, I got to run across to my English class, which is across the campus on the other side. And I run down the library, trying to head up to the English department. And then I step out. First thing I did, I just went down. And that's when I learned something called a freezing rain. Mm, mm. Yeah, I was like, huh. Oh. There's such thing. I see. <laughs> learn the hard way, right? <laughs> oh yes. So that's yeah. That's how I do. Learn how to deal with winter. Wow. So so you're when you came to Iowa State, that was your first time to the country. Oh yes, definitely. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, remember, I mentioned like ignorance is a bliss. Uh huh. I have many many <clears throat> episodes of that. <laughs> what was the What was the funnest thing about uh, Iowa State? Uh, funnest thing is flat. So when there's a lot of ice, you can only slide so far. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Did you go to any of the sports, sporting events or anything like that while you were there? I'm not a big sports fan. I tell the truth. I, I, I will watch Super Bowl and that will be the only one time I'll watch any, any sports event. Um, in fact, I don't even have TV, TV in my house now. So I tell you, on Sunday night, I'm going to scramble to figure out where I can watch the Super Bowl. <laughs> I got to figure out which channel is. I, this, and I have not had TV for a while now. So 
I've done through this practice several times. Um, it was another time, maybe about two, three years ago, I was watching on internet. And the internet was not great that day because it must be a lot of people are streaming. And it paused and then I keep refreshing. And then it started back up. It's like, I was watching and was like, hey, deja vu. I, I remember that part. I just right. saw it not too long ago. So instead of playing instantly, it was playing back to, it was, I was no longer watching live. Right. So that kind of sucks. <laughs> so uh, well, what's driving the reason for no TV? Is this, you just want to get it out of, uh, out of your life for now? I know I'm too cheap to pay for cable. <laughs> I'm with you there. It's unreal. The, it's a, the expense involved with that. So yeah, appreciate your honesty. <laughs> <laughs> well, how about, I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm cheap and lazy. <laughs> <laughs> and you're a lot of fun. I'll tell you that. I, I, I'm sure our <laughs> listeners are enjoying this. So how about you, you're, you're a, a VP of engineering at an OEM. What are you seeing as some challenges in the future? And what, what's what's coming at your down your pipeline that you think you're going to need to address in the future? Um, to understand what's coming my way, to understand the workforce that I have, and how to prepare us to for the next ten years. Um, I see my role really is not. I mean, obviously, I we solved the solution, um, but I don't see the value un, uh, unless I can make my imprint for the next 10, 15 years. So can I steer the company or my group in the correct direction? Um, are my guys enjoying working here? Are my guys making uh, impact to what is yet to come? If I can achieve that, I think I, I've done what I need to do here. No doubt. And for the listeners out there, Chung Chi, who may be considering a career in, in industry or OEM specifically, any advice that you would offer up? So when I interview someone, um, whether it's engineering role or a different role in the company, I always look at a person whether they, uh, they draw. If, if someone comes in and then they want to draw a box around themselves and say, hey, this is all I'm going to do. And this is all I'm willing to do. Um, that also means that that's all you will be able to do in the future. You will not be able to achieve anything else. Um, embrace what might be coming. Um, it may not be something that you like right now, mm -hmm. but it will bring to uh, different things that come up in the future. Um, right. Something that you may not know, may not understand. Your willingness to explore, to figure out how to get that done it's going to bring a lot to you. I mean, just coming from my own uh, background. So I was mechanically trained, right? Um, and I look at controls as something that's interesting. I call it the instant gratification. Uh, just because, you know, controls guy, you do something, you can see the results right, right away. Right then. For a mechanical, sure. yeah, for a mechanical guy, you design something, it takes three months before something show up in front of you and they say, oh, that doesn't work. Right, exactly. Yeah. So I like the control aspect of it. And then basically I start exploring, figure out, all right, what does it take? You know, what training do I get? And then start kind of talking to my boss, say, hey, can I try this smaller project uh, in the beginning and then until I get the entire line? Right. Um, that bring me a different aspect of what a mechanical design means. Exactly. So, I mean, there are so many options. Um, I don't not, don't let what you know right now be the obstacles that you know lock you in that box. Exactly. Yeah. Some of the best engineers we we've had a chance to interview have have said just that. And I remember one one engineer, he had an electrical, but he got put in pneumatics, mechanical, uh, even into a little bit civil, and he was like, "That stretched me." And now, you know, I have, you know, I'm not an expert in those areas, but I know enough to be able to bring value and to understand the process yeah. and to help. And I think that's just great advice, you know, because if you're, yeah. if you're set on, Hey, all I want to do is program PLCs. Well, that's probably all you will ever do. You know, it's program PLCs. Exactly. And it won't give you a chance to really, to grow and expand your career to potentially lead like you do uh, a group of engineers across multiple disciplines. Yeah. I mean, like, I, um, I, I, so my latest thing right now is in SQL, uh, okay. SQL. Yeah. And 
do I know SQL? Not really, but you know, I kind of take some classes, um, just exploring. I, I just find the power of um, information. So when you have all that pieces of information in front of you, it makes you make a quick and right decision. And that's crucial. Um, so I, I interact with eco, not just from the injury perspective. And I actually, I'm over, I have the responsibility of, um, of buying as well at Blueprint. So I interact with eco and with Rich from the both aspect, you know, we, the engineering is specified mm -hmm. and then on the buying side, we, we negotiate pricing, things like that. Right. And to, it's not just buying. I mean, it's easy to go to eco and just say, hey, give me better pricing, right? Right. But you can only go so far. Eco is not a nonprofit organization, correct? Uh, you guys need to make money somehow. I would definitely affirm that. And I, I hope Mr. Holmes and uh, Mr. Knight and the executives hear that as well. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, uh, this, I mean, it doesn't do both company a favor. All I can do, or, you know, only every time we see Rich, they say, hey, bring down the price. It doesn't work that way. So, the question is like, all right, what makes sense? You know, what are the things that we can do? Like, uh, what are the things I buy regularly from you guys? What are the things that I can see that I'll be buying for the next 10 months? Um, in the end, you know, work with eco and as far as stocking level, you know, things like that. Or am I buying this variation? Does it make sense? And do I need to go down to a different, like, I, we look at um, our uh, servo sizing. Am I using the right servo sizing? Or oh, I'm buying all these 10 different sizes of servo. Does it make sense to bring it down to five instead and I buy more quantity and things like that? So information um, in, in addition to engineering. You know, engineering is one side, information is on the other side. Right. It's just what I'm into right now. I hear you. Sounds like you're into yeah. a lot of fun stuff though. Yeah, I like stuff I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> now you said you had a lot of engineers that, that work for you and that that you've been able to, to help grow. Um, how about mentors? Do you, or do you have a chance to mentor to them? Have you had mentors that have helped you in your career that you like to uh, give some recognition to? Uh, I do have mentors. Um, my, my old bosses, I've been lucky. I'm very, very lucky uh, so far. I have had my, my very first boss in my first job. Um, I, I mentioned before, you know, I'd really never lifted a finger in, when I was growing up in, into, you know, I'm like deep in, in the manufacturing environment. Um, I have a boss that was there. He's the boss that is in the trench. And that really set an example for me. You know, there's a boss that say, hey, you work Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, you then come back and report to me on Monday. And he was not like that. Um, he was there with me all along. And, you know, I have questions. He answers, you know, I need help. He provides the help. Uh, yeah. That was my my first boss, and that left a huge impression on me how I should behave um, from me and with my guys. Mm -hmm. So, have you guys had? Do you have uh, opportunities to to mentor people one on one as they as they're growing in their engineering career? Do you find those conversations come naturally? Do you guys schedule that time? Just curious on how you guys or you personally go about that development. Yeah, so it, it's an interesting topic. Um, like people that has interacted with Blueprint before, um, you know, that mentor, the mentorship has not never been an emphasis. Uh, with Andre, who is now our, our CEO, he puts a lot of emphasis on it. Um, and he does it as an example himself. Um, he would do that with multiple people, um, not just his direct report. He would do that to some guy on the floor who's doing, putting machines together. He would take time and do that with those individuals as well. He would read book with them. Um, you would talk about things, talk about issues, talk about life. That's an example that he's leaving. And like me personally, I do a mentorship with some individuals um, that's on a regular ske schedule right. basis. So some every week, some every two weeks, uh, like I'll be doing one at 1030 after this call. Um, so it, it's a great thing because it it shines a different lights to the, the company culture. Um, used to be just work, work, work. Now there's, you know, that the personal touch. Yeah to help a person to grow, um, to achieve more than what they were only allowed to, to do. And it sounds like, so, which is a great thing, but it's also, I, I'm picking up, there's a lot of intentionality on your behalf. You see this as important. 
I mean, you're making time on your calendar. You're investing your time in others. You're pouring into them. So hats off to you for recognizing the importance of it. Yeah. I basically tell my guys I don't do anything. I mean, all the work is achieved by those guys. Right, right. I rely on them, really. It's, I mean, they are the, they are the real people putting the effort in, doing their real work. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, you know, hats off. I mean, it sounds like you're a great leader. And, uh, you know, what, I'm curious in your role, when do you find that you're you're the happiest? What work are you doing? What work are you doing that gives you the most fulfillment, if you will? Uh, when I go from I don't know what I'm looking at to aha, ah, that moment, okay. that moment, that moment. Okay, very cool. Yeah. How about highlights? Anything that you can look back across your career and you say, you know, what I was a part of that project or I was a part of that solution. And it was really cool. Anything stand out? So I, I mean, my role right now um, is more on the managing side. Um, I don't really do it design work, but I can tell you that I can go to uh, grocery stores, um, to Staples, to Sam's, and then I can look at some of the products. I can look at those, and then I say, "Huh, that was my design." Like I can tell you right now, if you go to a grocery store like Kroger. It's a square uh, container that makes uh, butter or margarine. Uh-huh. You open the lid up. There's a seal, a white seal on it. There's got two little holes and one big hole uh, 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 imprint on it. Uh-huh. And I know exactly why it's there. Okay. Why is it there? Uh, it was there because the, the margarine would degas over time. The issue that we had before was that as it degas, you know, you put them in storage, right? So it degas so much that actually it popped the seal open. Oh wow! We when we hit seal, the the seal, the the plastic uh, seal on the cup, we actually have this uh, device that actually push it down so that it's concave, uh-huh. and so that when it degas, it will just become flat. And when we do that, when the device is hot, that's why it leaves that imprint in there. Okay. Yeah. There you go. So <clears throat> that's. A- I mean that that yeah that that's a that's a satisfaction um for a lot of our engineers here because in Blueprint we do um packaging equipment right for food. Right. So they go up to the grocery store. They can tell their their kids, their husband, their wife, and say, "Hey, that was my machine." There you go. There you go. It sounds like it's a, a lot of uh, uh, fulfillment and 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 pride. And what exactly. they're seeing. That's that is exactly. awesome. Good. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing that. You know, that, that was wonderful. And we love to have these hero conversations, Chung Chi, and we talk a little bit outside of work, you know, which we've done a little bit of that already. So, you know, let's 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 get off the uh the the VP of engineering and let's just talk Chung Chi for a bit for a few minutes, if that's okay. Yeah, there's not much outside of Chung Chi. <laughs> oh, you're sure it is. How about let's start with your family. Anything with your family you'd like to share? Uh, I got three kids, my, my wife, uh, who works at home. So, well, not works at home. She, she's, um, basically washed all over us. Um, I got three kids, um, 17, 14 and 11. So actually well, last year. Yeah. So I got two in high school now, one in um, middle school. Okay. And they have not seen their school since COVID. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Now are they boys, girls? What's your mix there? Yeah, my oldest one is a boy and then two girls. A boy and two girls. I bet they keep you busy. Yeah, yeah, yeah they do. <laughs> but so, they are at an age now where they kind of just, you know, they're friends. They they talk to themselves without, right. without. Uh, they, actually, it's more like their age where they say, hey, parents, give me some space. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was wondering, are you at that point where dad's not cool anymore, you know? Yeah, dad's definitely not cool. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we think you're cool. So, we'll, you know, <laughs> hopefully they'll listen to this because I'm sure they're, they're that generation. They love the podcast, listen to that type of stuff. So maybe they'll listen to your story. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> maybe they'll appreciate that when they're like, they turn, turn up, when they're 25. There you go. There you go. This is yeah. it's evergreen. So it'll be out there. So whenever they're ready to listen, it'll be here for them. <laughs> yeah. How about um, stuff that you enjoy? podcasts, YouTube channels, any books, just things that you, that you find value that you, that you like to share. Uh, so 
so for entertainment, I listen to What We Don't Tell Me. Um, that's on NPR. Um, I listen to Planet Money, which is you know interesting from time to time. Like the one I listened to yesterday was talking about uh, Robin Hood and GameStop. Mm -hmm. They clarify some of the things that I thought was crazy, but they I think was pretty clear uh, after they explained all that. Right. So um, I we were talking about um, exercising. I I run. Um, I just started doing that since COVID, just because they shut down the gym, and right. I can't go to the gym anymore. I just start running on the light um, in, at night. So. Okay. If you guys live in Milotian, you see a night, you see a guy running at night with two lights on, right. one on his head, one's on the hit on his on his hip. That's me. Don't hit me. <laughs> <laughs> got it, got it. So so you yeah. are, you are a runner. Anything you any other hobbies you enjoy doing besides running? Uh I, I play piano, I play guitar, um, mostly piano. Okay. Um, I've been doing that since I was five. Uh, now I'm it's usually pretty pretty busy, so I yeah. don't do as much anymore. But I do enjoy playing like different music, new music, um, just explore. Yeah. Like my thing right now in the last year or two is really the Rachmaninoff and Brahms. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Just the the harmony they can do is amazing. So do you have a uh, what kind of, a piano at your at your home? Yeah, two. Two of them. Okay. Two pianos, three get four, three or four guitars. Okay. One drum set. I, I learned drum set. Uh, I really did not have a time to practice. I told my wife I want to learn cello. She said, you're too old for that. <laughs> Don't listen to her, Jung chi Don't listen. You can do it. <laughs> Besides, there's no space in the house for a big right, cello. <laughs> right. We have a, a, a small a baby grand. My wife plays piano. Ooh, she's, play, uh, she's played her whole what, life. So What kind? Oh, man, you had to ask me. She's going to kick my butt i forget the name of it but i will send you a picture but it's uh <laughs> she's teaching our daughters now so they're eight and ten so they've been playing for a few years but uh, i love just to hear her sit and play the the classics yeah. and things like it sounds like you're doing that as well yeah my uh my wife so i sent all my kids to get lessons um uh -huh. i i do not know how to teach i am not a good uh, music teacher yeah i don't have the so, patience yeah. Yeah. Just don't have the time. Also, so yeah. my wife said, "Imagine the money that you could have saved by teaching your own kids." Right. Yeah. I was yeah. like, "Oh yeah." It has its challenges. You know, sometimes the uh, piano lessons don't go as smooth as as we would like. So uh, we have to. Yeah. This is just. This is not the night for piano. We'll try tomorrow night. You know. So. Uh, but. Yeah. It's, it's fun to hear them play and to watch them progress and things like that. Yeah, I, I like accompany my kids to their piano lessons. Um, and then I, the patience in that teacher is just incredible. Oh, yeah. You know, I, I heard my kids play and then, then she said, oh, so good, so good. In my head, I was like, no, that cannot be good. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> so, so Chung Chi, we've been doing a new thing on Eco Ask Why. It's a lightning round. It's just a bunch of random questions. Uh, they can be short answers. They can be long answers, however you choose to go. But we'll, uh, we'll just get to our listeners to know a little bit more about you. So uh, you you willing to play the game? Sure. You might regret with the answer. So. That's okay. There's no regrets here. It's all good. <laughs> this, is, this is fun stuff. So we'll start with the softball. So what we'll, would we'll be your, your favorite food? Uh, depends. Um, okay. it, that changes. Right now, my favorite food is ZZ Cube. Uh, uh, Prime prime rib. Okay. Can't, can't go wrong with that, my friend. How about oh, your, yeah. your your favorite adult beverage? So um when I was 14, I was given a guinea stout by my friend's dad. Okay. In Korea, Asia, there's no age limit, right? So right. my and then that's when I realized I'm allergic to alcohol. Okay. okay. And I've tried it several more times in my adult life um i'm allergic to all of them as long as they have alcohol really okay so it sucks to be me <laughs> however however i'm the t i'm the best travel buddy right right you're always yes. the driver <laughs> yeah so when you pay the bill my name is on it but i don't drink a drop right and then i'll drive you home yeah there you go okay yes how about your uh, your favorite movie My favorite movie, I don't know, Kill Bill 1, not 2. 
Okay. That was a good one. Uh, I'm, I'm interested with this, with your answer earlier. What is your favorite type of music? Type of music. I'm definitely classical. Let me tell a little story. Okay. Um, so I, I had piano lessons when I was five and then up to when I was 16. So basically uh, where I grew up, there's tests uh -huh. um, uh, in music theory and then in the, the playing part. So I completed all my, all my tests. I was done. So I moved on to take classical guitar lesson. So I have a teacher and, you know, his name is Eric and Eric loves Eric Clapton. Okay. So he was telling me about Eric Clapton and then my fate was just a blank. Um, and then he said, you don't know who's Eric Clapton? I said, like, no. How about John Lennon? I said, who? Right. So my growing up, I've always listened to classical music. Um, but since then, I'm, you know, since I'm older now, I kind of like grow my taste a little bit. Um, so I, I'm like listening to jazz um, uh, and do blues and things like that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Where's a uh, a destination that you you haven't been yet that you'd like to go to? So there are sixty three national parks. I've been to thirteen. Okay, I got fifty more to go. All right, so it's on your list. It's on your list. So it's on my list. That's what, right. Well, out of those thirteen, we'll just make this part of the, the lightning round. What was your favorite one that you visited so far? I did Zion's uh, Angels Landing. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you heard of that one. That's the one you walk. Like you, you think you're there and then um, there's a sign that says, if you go continue, if you keep going, 10 people has died since, wow. I don't know when. So I did that in uh, between Christmas and New Year. Um, I have chain on my boots and then, you know, I was pulling basically to get all the way up and uh, you got to pull yourself up uh, on with a chain uh -huh. and come back down that way. That was very, very interesting. Wow. So, sound like you're a little you remember bit. Remember I said it's, no, no, no. It, it, I'm not adventurous. It's more like the ignorance is a bliss part. I keep repeating. <laughs> All right. How about uh, cats or dogs? Definitely dogs. Definitely dogs. All right. Well, you are yeah. you are a wonderful participant in the lightning round. So thank you for uh, putting up with me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, thank you for putting up with me. <laughs> Well, this this has been a lot of fun, Chung Chi, just to get to know you, and uh, and and we always wrap up the Eco Ask Why with the Why. We're just talking about passion and what drives people. So, if somebody would want to know what your why is, Chung Chi, how would you answer that? I want to know the unknown. All right, that is awesome. So, I'll just keep looking for that always, right? Yeah, that's awesome. Well, Chung Chi, this has been a blast. You're, a, I'll, I'll make sure that we tag Wawa, so hopefully they'll see that and get you that free <laughs> coffee, you know. But uh, thank you so much for being on on Eco Sy for sharing your story. It's, it's been just a, a wonderful time to get to know you. Uh, thank you for the effort. Absolutely, thank you, sir. All right. Thank you for listening to Eco Sy. This show is supported ad free by Electrical Equipment Company. ECO is redefining the expectations of an electrical distributor by placing people and ideas before products. Please subscribe and share with your colleagues and friends. Also, leave comments, feedback, and any new topics that you would like to hear. To learn more or to share your insights, visit ecosy.com. That's E-E-C-O-A-S-K-S-W-H-Y.com.